Yeah, so hi, I'm Ellen Adarna and um, before the program, I was uh, diagnosed with anxiety, depression, and um, post-traumatic stress disorder. And um, the reason why these things happened to me was because of the death of my father. Um, I had unhealthy relationships and I just had gave birth at the time and all these things happened together all at one time so it was really a recipe for those issues and problems. Okay, so emotionally at that time I was um, I didn't know who I was anymore. Um, having lost an anchor in the family, um, and with all the changes that came along with motherhood, I, I, I lost myself. I, I lost my identity. I didn't know who I was. I was very confused, and. Um, it basically broke down. I lost my confidence. I lost the trust I had in myself way back when I was younger, which I was, I considered myself a very strong person. And those things I lost. It was like back to zero. With my health, I didn't really experience a lot of, um, you know, like getting sick or having fever and stuff like that. I, I was okay. But I think it manifested, um, I would just be puking out of the blue uncontrollably, having panic attacks, not knowing what is going on with me, what's going on with my body. Um, I would just be shaking. And that was my first time to experience those. So, you know, when you feel like you don't know what's happening with you, and plus with the sudden death of my dad. So I thought that every time I had those attacks, automatically my mind would just go to the pattern where I'm going to die because my dad died suddenly and I'm going to die. And plus with the hormones and stuff like that. So yeah, it really went into a downward spiral. That was my health, my condition at that time. So uh, during my depressive state i remember i was um, sleeping a lot i was always tired even if i was wasn't doing anything oh, well i was also taking care of my son but that time felt like a blur because i most of what i remember was just that i was always tired and sleeping and it felt so sad because even when my son was there, he was the one that I really wanted in life. I, I knew that I always wanted a kid, a child. But every time I look at him, I'd even be more depressed. Because what is this? Why do I feel like this? Is, is this what I'm supposed to feel like? Is this what motherhood is? I'm tired. I'm sad. I'm grieving. So, um... I had a therapist, uh, I had a psychiatrist, and um, the time when I was talking to them, I wasn't taking any medications at that time yet because I was breastfeeding. And um, if you're a mom, if you're a girl, you know how taxing and um, tiring breastfeeding is. It takes a toll on your mind and your body. So, yeah, I, I, I only started taking the medications right after I breastfed. Um, and I was still counseling, but... Um, so, okay, I took medications. I was on Zaner. I was on... I had Dormicums uh, to knock me out. Like, this is a really strong sleeping pill. And um, I was taking Z20. Z20 is for uh, people who are dealing with 
PTSD, which I was. Yeah, but every time I took those pills, I wouldn't feel anything. I wouldn't be sad. I wouldn't be anxious. I wouldn't be nervous. But I wasn't happy. I didn't feel like, you know, oh, every time I take the pill and then boom, I'm happy. No, none of those. It was, I was like a robot. So basically the pills were just to mask the problems. It wasn't to make it go away. It was just a layer to filter it. So there, and yeah, the, the, the talks helped a bit. It was kind of good to vent out things, to talk to someone, but, or at the time, I wasn't taking action to, to fix or to go to the bottom of what really cost it. Okay, so I met, um, I, I heard about the program through Samantha Kapunan. She did the program before me. And um, I knew, from what I knew is that she had more or less the same issues that I had. Um, and yeah, by talking to them and some close friends, our, our, our friends, her friends and my friends, she she was better after the program and after she did the program so with me at that time i basically tried everything and i was still feeling shitty so it was like what's there to lose right so i might as well try this so um yeah, that's how I, I, I got into the program. I signed up and yeah, I didn't expect anything though because <laughs> no one's ever heard of, I've never heard of a program like this, right? What is this? It's like just, it felt like it was just physical activities. But I didn't know that you know, using your body is a way to get here. This program, the Kokoro program is not something you hear of anywhere or you, you don't see them on Instagram. Um, it was just by through word of mouth. The reason, the only reason why I, I jumped into it was because I saw Sam and she was better. So there and um, yes, yeah, so when I, I finally decided to, to, to join, um, the coach to somewhat like interrogate or we had an interview we were in communication a month before I flew in and yeah it was just um, like talking and he was um, studying or examining me or what kind of person or issues I, I, I was having and yeah the the communication before the program starts I, it's very it's, it's important so our day a uh, typical normal day would be like um wake up at five um after that we meditate um probably around 20 to 30 minutes i i don't know but it felt like that um and then after the meditations would be journaling, like writing stuff, writing affirmations, things that you you tell yourself and you believe. Um, and then after that, we would be doing some exercises. It would be physical or it was mostly physical. There was always that physical part. After the exercises would be the discussion. He would explain to you what the purpose of that exercise was. So, of course, you had to do it and then he would explain it to you so you get it. You get what's happening. They just don't make you do stuff and not make you understand and realize its purpose. So, yeah, the discussions theories it was like going to school uh, for me this is where actually most of my learning took place it was through the talking 
it was like therapy and lessons, life lessons. So there, yeah, and then the discussion theories, um, and then lunch break, and then you rest. And then in the afternoon, another exercise. And after the exercise would be discussions again. And after that, dinner and you're done with your day. So the first exercise I did when I arrived, obviously, was I think the hardest for me. It's called the Japanese dry swimming. Don't stop. Don't stop. You're on the best way. Don't stop it. When I think about it now, it's the hardest for me because I came here in a very bad condition. Yeah, it was the most frustrating thing, exercise. So I was tired and I was complaining and I was feeling all these things. And I guess through that exercise, the first exercise, my teacher was able to point out my weaknesses, my problems, what I was dealing with because it was very hard. I was put in a very uncomfortable situation. So um, after each day passes, after every, every session or day, um, I would feel like the first three days, I was still kind of getting the feel of it. I was still feeling, I mean, I still had my, I was still kind of confused the first three days. But um, <clears throat> after the fourth day, I started getting it. Like, I knew why I had an idea. I mean, I knew why I was depressed, why I was anxious, and why this is happen to, happening to me, and why that is happening to me. But basically, the fourth day, I, I felt like I was better. I was slowly gaining my confidence back. It was always different. It wasn't always just physical there were like um, sensitivity exercises um, where they had to blindfold me um, apart from I remember they would always also put me in situations where all my issues come out all my fears came out, my frustrations. and You know, when you know that this is what your day is going to be like, that you have to deal with yourself and your issues and your problems, it's, it, it's not, it, it doesn't feel so good. It makes you nervous. So every day was always something, something nerve wracking. But it was also fulfilling to be able to finish it, finish the task, complete the exercise, and then the next day, what would happen? <laughs> like, it, was, it was a vicious cycle. So uh, basically, my takeaway from those was just to, to deal with it and to manage it and to let it pass. Okay, the Kokoro program is focused on four areas. Um, this is the mind the body and the soul so the mind four areas because the mind has like two branches it's the subconscious mind and the intellectual mind and um, 
they teach you how to also balance these things because in the Japanese Chinese traditional way of how they train this is how they train that I think a, a whole individual you know is a balance of all these of these four so um, yeah with um, with the body of course you you exercise you you do things that is good for your body you feed your body right you eat right and I was also put in a specific diet when I was here and oh, with the mind the subconscious our exercises would be mostly blindfolded it was always it was probably to shut down everything and to just um, work on gut feeling and um, the first impulse you know because when you think when you're not um, loaded with all these informations it's that feeling it's that first impulse is what you think is right for you or is the right thing and um, the intellectual area would be the discussions I think um, the informations that they feed you um, the exercises that was that and then the soul um, would be the reward because you can't always be like putting yourself in uncomfortable situations right um, you can't be training and not um, having fun it has to be a balance so the soul was the balance from all the body mind exercises so uh, the accommodations is that um, you are you and your coach are stuck <laughs> are in one place it is a very homey place um, it's like it's like camp <laughs> I think for me I call it camp because you know I trained here and um, yeah it's very homey you have um, people who take care of you people who tend to your needs your basic needs uh, food is provided um, there are uh, there's hot and cold shower with good water pressure and um, Pa Umar, uh, he's uh, one of the caretakers of the place, of the camp. <laughs> uh, yeah, he will help you with everything. So it's basically just, you're in your home, but in a different country. So I'm here now and this is like nine months after the program, I think, more or less. Um, right after I got home, uh, after right after the program, when I got home, my my family and my friends noticed a lot of change. Like it was um, it was a paradigm shift. What happened in two weeks? Thinking about it now, for me, like, it felt impossible. Because how much transformation can you do in two weeks, right? It's just a short amount of time but of course because you had we had to change our habits we had to change um, our ways and it was a completely different lifestyle from the one from pre-program so my mindset uh, my mindset change um, I suddenly had rituals. Um, I was more aware of things. So, yeah, because that changed. Basically, I changed. My life changed. My how 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 I viewed things changed. So my environment changed. I noticed with me before. I was always angry. I was very aggressive. Like. This is something that 
really gets the best of me. I, I had no, I had zero control of it before. But now, I think I'm better and I'm aware at, at, at catching it. So, I have better relationships with people. Um, I'm not as temperamental. And uh, with my depression and anxiety, it's basically gone. <laughs> um, it's like it never happened. So, yeah, I feel, I feel good. I feel great. I, I don't think that I will ever fall back into the state where I was really at my lowest because I was given to lose. I, I know what I'm capable of. I was trained to, to you know, to, to work on, on, on those emotions and feelings. So yeah, but um, I guess fear and anger and frustrations, all those basic emotion stuff are still there, but I am able to manage it and yeah, life is a constant battle of being able to manage those. So, so at first, uh, my, my teacher was uh, an internet. Ignorant, <laughs> it was ignorant and oblivious about the social media and the whole internet world. And you know, um, after I did the program, I was telling him, and I, if I remember talking to Sam, that you know, if this helped me, if this worked for me, how much more other people, you know, and because we are humans and we were born to face issues and to suffer. Some just deal with it better than others. Um, yeah, so if it was able to help me get over my mental issues, I convinced, we convinced our, our coach to, you know, to to join this um, chaotic world of <laughs> social media and uh, yeah I'm just actually here to to let you guys know that if you are dealing with um, depression or anxiety PTSD or whatever that mental issue is there is hope of a lot of you guys asked what that walk was for what that 115 kilometer walk was for um, I mean I had the option not to do it but I thought it was very essential for me and the program because um, yeah I thought it was just going to be a walk we walk every day, right? I was like, ha, walking for, what, uh, 24 hours is nothing. Walking, not thinking about what's going to happen because you don't really know what's happening and or what's going to happen or what's happening unless you're faced with it. 
So in my head, before doing the walk, I thought I was just going to be walking for 24 hours and that would be fine. But no, I had, I had, I didn't realize this before the walk that at some point, the body shuts down. Um, and because it's a long, long, long walk, and you're in so much pain and you are in a very uncomfortable situation you know all these thoughts negative thoughts uh, unpleasant thoughts and emotions come out i don't want to say negative because you know having frustration and being angry is also essential <laughs> you need that in life um so um yeah i had to deal with that with the frustration the pain the anger I was suffering but also at some point I was feeling pleasant the opposite like I had moments of peace of happiness of contentment and fulfillment you know I'm doing this yes I can do that but it's because it I finished it in 25 hours it was a vicious cycle like I I I just really promised myself and had to be really aware that, okay, I'm starting to feel this again. I'm starting to feel angry. And then I would wait for it to pass. And then, okay, fine, I'm feeling happy again. And then boom, and then, okay, this anger will come back. This anger will come back. And then it's a vicious cycle of that. And eventually, you will be better at managing those. So, um, yeah that's what i felt about it and also like i have had thoughts that maybe i should just give up and quit but no i use that energy to make me float to my destination and i just had to be really committed and focused and uh, yeah that was it that was the point of um of, of the walk uh, my takeaway from that was that the emotions that I was faced with were very clear and it was also very clear to me that I was able to overcome and manage these things and channel them right and productive